By now you would have seen all the videos across YouTube and social media about DJI releasing their own FPV drone, which combines all the capabilities of a Mavic with the speed and agility of a traditional FPV quadcopter. What we want to answer today is whether this drone is for you, whether you're a beginner wanting to get into FPV for the first time, you're a pilot flying Mavics and want to add FPV to your capabilities and toolkit, or you're a seasoned FPV pilot wanting to know whether this is something worth spending some money on. For a beginner, it appears to be a very easy entry point to the FPV hobby because you get great equipment straight out of the box, a great flying and well-tuned quad, and you don't even have to learn how to solder. I don't have the time or patience or a desire to weld or solder things to boards and take apart cameras and casings and, and make my own FPV drone. And the people that can do that, more power to you because I am not that person. The FPV drones that people build and customize before you saw this come out onto the market are very different than this DJI FPV. Is that correct? It's like a flying motherboard you have to solder yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a great way to put it. I don't believe the DJI FPV combo is the right point for beginners because even with all the different flight modes that bring in stabilization and practically autopilot functionality, it's not the right entry point because it starts at 2000 US or 3200 Aussie dollar redos, and that's pricing from the DJI website. When you add the FPV combo, two years of DJI refresh, the Fly More kit for batteries, two SD cards, one for the drone, one for the goggles, you end up with small change after parting with near on $2,000. And to be fair to DJI, when you go and buy a similar spec freestyle ready to fly kit, such as the Johnny FPV bundle with the DJI goggles and controller, you're gonna be spending around 1600 US anyway. If we took the DJI refresh away, dollar for dollar, you're coming out the same. Now, this assumes you don't add a GoPro and you're using the onboard DVR from the air unit. Adding a GoPro actually puts the freestyle kit at a higher price point than a DJI FPV combo. A beginner or someone wanting to get into flying FPV, you're probably not gonna to wanna to spend that much, but even if you do, there is one fatal flaw for a beginner learning FPV. You're gonna crash when flying FPV. Now that clip, if you don't know, is Joshua Bardwell. He's the FPV know-it-all and go and check his channel out. Bardwell's a seasoned FPV pilot and he can fly. The crash you saw in that clip, a typical FPV drone would have been able to turtle mode, rearm, and keep on flying. For argument's sake, if you did break an arm, it's only a $10 part to replace on a freestyle drone and you only have to solder three wires. We Talk UAV did a great job at trying to break it by putting it through its paces with some very rigorous testing. We're gonna crash it, let's go! Now for the seasoned Mavic pilot. If you wanna add FPV footage to your toolkit, this is gonna be the perfect quadcopter for you. And I recommend you spend a lot of time learning on the DJI sim with the goggles on before you go full manual mode where you can do flips and rolls so you avoid end up using all your DJI refreshes in the first month of owning it. And what about the seasoned FPV pilot? Now my brothers and sisters in FPV, you know this isn't a bando basher, a racer, or even a long range flyer. You'd have to satisfy yourself is the quality of the camera and the video that you can get from it actually better than what you already have because if you do then you can justify the cost. As it stands the new controller is not even compatible with the air unit or Vista so that's 200 bucks from the combo wasted and you can't even use the existing DJI FPV controller. If it was made compatible then it becomes a bit more of a compelling argument and it looks like a pretty decent transmitter having borrowed its design from the TBS Tango 2. 
The V2 goggles are compatible with the Vista in the air unit, so if you have the V1s and you're looking to upgrade or you're wanting to go DJI for the first time, you're not wasting funds here. However, as it stands today, the V1 goggles are not compatible with the FPV drone, probably because of the dual 5 and 2.4 gigahertz transmission. So if you wanted to keep your V1s for spectating on the, on the FPV drone, not gonna happen. But it certainly does work for spectating with a Vista or an air unit, so it does make it okay to grab the bundle. I don't see seasoned FPV pilots buying this, unless, you can justify the incremental and marginal differences in video quality from the DJI FPV drone to what you're getting from your action camera that's already strapped to your 5 inch. What I do foresee is a lot of guys in the FPV, what I do see is the potential for us to reverse engineer how DJI have arrived at the setup. The motor combination, the props, as well as the 6S Lion battery that gives you the flight time. I reckon we're going to see that setup make its way onto our typical 5 inch quads in order to give us the same amount of extended flight time, especially when it comes to doing videography work with our freestyle ready drones. Well, that's it from me. As you can see, I don't think it's good for beginners. I think it's the seasoned Mavic pilots and those that have been flying the DJI drones moving across into FPV are the ones this is really targeting at. And the typical FPV pilot, if the comments on Facebook have anything to say, you're probably not buying this. I'm Darren Allett. Thanks for sticking around. Until the next time, don't forget to send it.